All right. So today I, I've been getting a lot of uh, questions, I think maybe because it's winter, uh, but I've been getting a lot of questions uh, written in to me around um, all the stress around getting started in your art again. So today I just thought I'd just take 20 minutes and share with you three tips um, on how to make this easier, how to get going in your art again and stay going in your art. Um, you know, what got me curious about this was a few years ago, probably about 10 years ago, I, I've been working daily in my studio and it was coming up to around Christmas time, but I was on such a good roll and I was making art pretty much every day. And, and you know, when you get that going in that momentum, it was just so good. And then I uh, visited my dad in Colorado and I was gone for two weeks. And, you know, it was funny when I was away and it was great to get away and everything, but I started worrying about, <clears throat> about the work and I, and I wasn't in front of it. And I couldn't, uh, I, I felt like the more days that went by, I started to, uh, I started to um, kind of just lose the momentum, you know, like sort of almost forgetting I was an artist. And anyway, so I get back from this trip and I'll never forget it. I can't, it was, it was um, in between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, hey, Zell, nice to see you, Tootsie, Colleen. Um, Thanks for, thanks for being here, you guys. I'm also streaming on YouTube. So if any of the folks are on YouTube, um, I hope that I am that this is working. Um, but anyway, so I get back from, from this trip and I walk into my studio and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not ha I'm not like connected to the work at all. I felt like, like a stranger, you know, like who's, Whose work is this? I had so much loss. I was so stressed out about it. The stress had grown over that period of time. And I just couldn't believe it. It was like, whose art is this? And it, I had to sit down in the room and just kind of like, it was almost like I was in a stranger's studio. And I mean, it's ridiculous. This is my work. I've been working for weeks leading up to this two week break. And it was then that I realized that this art making thing, man, when you're not doing it, it starts to get weird. <laughs> it, starts to, it starts to erode, it starts to dissipate, it starts to become harder to start. So that's what I wanna talk about today. I wanna give you guys a few tips that, uh, three things that have helped me um, make this whole process easier, getting started again. Tam, thanks for being here. Um, Christine. Uh, Mimi, hi, Alex, uh, Anya from Montreal. Hope you guys are doing good. It's freezing cold where I am right now. Well, not cold compared to Montreal probably, but it's cold here. Anyway, so the first thing, the first tip, the first three things, first of three things I wanna share with you is this idea about um, the actual making of the art doesn't feel in any way like thinking about making art. Like those are completely different categories and we get confused. We think because we're, if, if you're not doing your work and you're stressing about it and you meet someone you know, at a party and they're saying, well, how's your work going? You'll say, it's just not going very good. I feel bad about it. I, I'm de de disconnected, but you're not making art. It's the thinking about it and, the, and that isn't it at all. And it's so important to remember that because all you have to do to get a different story is to go into it and just start, just do anything. It doesn't even matter if you're like painting, priming boards, that experience is going to be much more buoyant. It's, it's, it's gonna feel much better than worrying about what you're gonna be like when you start painting again. Like it's completely different, <laughs> it's completely different. So the takeaway is you just start doing something, man. You just, it doesn't even matter. Clean the studio even, you know, prepare some panels, just throw paint on the board. That's what gets you back into it. And you can be gone for two weeks 
you can be gone for a month, but don't fall prey to this worrying about like I was doing, you know, worrying about it every day, thinking, did I lose it? I'm never going to find my way back. You can't figure it out by thinking about it. Art doesn't work like that. You figure it about by taking action and it all gets better as soon as you start taking action. I promise, it's just crazy. And ever since then, when I start feeling that anxiety, it's like, oh yeah, I'm doing that thing that's next to art. It's not even related to art. It's this thing that you do when you're not doing art that stresses you out <laughs> and it takes you out. It can actually stop you making art because what happens? You keep procrastinating and each day it gets worse. The more you do in art, the more you tend to do. The less you do, the less you tend to do. So it's like, that's what we're talking about today. What are a few ways to overcome that tendency, right? Um, Mary, Denise, uh, yeah, so you guys get it, right? I, I know, uh, Carol, yeah, I know, I know this um, from my own experience and then teaching it. And it's funny, you know, you talk to people and they're like, how's it going? It was so going so good before. And they're like, oh, it was going great. I haven't done anything for six weeks. You know, <laughs> it just stops you dead. So real simple, it's thinking about it is an art. It's not even related. Don't even think of it as, don't connect it to your art making. It can be stressful, do its own thing, but don't let it pollute your art making experience. Just start in on, get in motion, get in motion and watch what happens and that experience is really good. That's pretty easy. It's pretty easy to play around with materials, right? Okay, so that's 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 really, I could leave right now. That's a huge one. And a lot of people uh, slip into that. So that's a really good thing. Um, the second thing is, and, uh, is if you're like me and you don't have all the time in the world and you've got to do other things and you know maybe your art's part-time or whatever, is to um, just set up a time during the week, a day or several days, preferably um, during the week for that 30 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, whatever you got, but be thoughtful about when you schedule it and do it in an optimal time. So what that means is if you are doing, let's say you've got a huge term paper to write, you know, it's a really good time to make art after you've been sitting there for a long time writing because it's different and it will you'll feel more alive. Um, if you have a really um, you know relaxed day, that's a good time to schedule it because then there's this activity in it, you know. Or um, maybe you've got to you know babysit kids and you know you want to place these little chunks of time strategically ahead of time to so do this on Sunday for the five days, choose two or three spots. It's like, when will, when would be the best time? And when would it feel the most different in my life to be making art? And it's just something we never think about. It's like, oh, when am I going to fit this in? I'll just do it in the morning, get it over with. Well, maybe the morning's not the best time to do it. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's a different time, right? So be strategic about that. Um, when things are put together that are different in our art, like if you've got bright color next to dull color, those two things, that's a juxtaposition and they enhance each, enhance each other. Um, loose painting next to controlled painting, um, you know, uh, feeling um, super confident and not sure. Combining these things in our work makes interesting work it makes it interesting to make it. And it also, the results are really interesting because it's differences, there's contrast. So if you think of your day the same way, the hours in your day, what are you gonna do in the morning that's gonna set you up so you'll feel most ready to make art, right? You know, maybe you're having a, a really, you know, a high powered business meeting or something, you know, or something where you, you're, you're in around a lot of people for a big chunk of the day. And then when you get that done, you get to escape to the studio for 40 minutes. That's what I'm talking about. Or maybe you do it after you do some workout or exercise, whatever it is, um, how do you place it? Because you're curating your day and those days are weeks and you're curating your weeks and you're setting up the months, the weeks, the days, the hours 
to support this. And it doesn't take much, it's just a bit of planning, right? Um, <laughs> Nancy's saying, uh, stop, do it now. That led me to 20 years of not doing, uh, not doing my art. Uh, awesome, exactly. Um, so Tam's saying, uh, I used to do my art at the end of the day before bed to wind down before bed. Yeah, it's funny. I played around with this a lot because I was always looking for like, what's the, what's the sort of secret sauce of how to do this? And it doesn't really matter to me when I do it. What matters is what came before for me. I'm pretty good in the morning. I mean, I'm not so good in the evening, but I can get into it in the evening. You know, I can just blast the music and I can, I can go there, but it really depends on what I was doing ahead of time. So that's also really important. So that first thing, that first tip is don't worry, you know, don't stress about this. Um, that's not art making. Art making only, you get to only judge your art making when you're doing it just presume it's going great. Don't even think about it because when you're doing it, it's way, it's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. It provides its own momentum. It gives you feedback. It gives you energy. And the second idea of just like your work where you're bringing differences together that create interest and contrast and make you feel alive. You want to schedule your day. You want to look at the, when you're, where you're placing that workout time, that painting time in your week, and it's kind of fun, you know, planning's not a stressful thing if you do it ahead of time. It's really fun looking at a calendar and going, okay, I'm meeting this friend who tends to talk my ear off and we're gonna go for a two hour walk. I'll really be ready for a break <laughs> after that. So I'm gonna do my, my painting session at one o'clock because we're gonna be done with that walk. And you wanna stick to this. You wanna defend these little chunks because the, it's what everything hangs on. We're talking about a pattern that you're creating for your life that can become habitual. It's the pattern we want to respect. Even if you just go into the studio, you don't do much, but you go there and you mess around a little, at least you went when you said you were gonna go. So that brings me to the third piece of this, the third idea. And it's about, um, it's about getting evidence of of your progress. It's super, super important for everybody to feel like they're moving the ball down the field. And art is a tricky one because you know how it is, you're making something and, and it's so good on Wednesday and then it sucks on Thursday. And it's like, am I going backwards? And then you kind of lose it. I mean, let me know in the comments if you guys uh, have that experience. Like it is not, <laughs> it is not a straight line of progress, I swear it is It is the most circuitous up and down. I mean, you definitely see progress, you know, year to year, I can see it, but month to month even, sometimes I just feel like I'm going, like I'm regressing, right? Um, yeah, so let me know, do you guys, do you, do you see that you, do you feel that where you, you lose momentum, where you can't even tell you're progressing? The problem with that, the problem with that is that we get we get um, we get disillusioned because we want to feel like we're making progress. We because that's what makes us like, oh, cool! Like I actually, this was you know, I moved the ball down the field a little bit. I gained some territory. That that's what getting better at something, um, feeling like you're gaining on on some knowledge or you're getting closer to what you want. That's what keeps you in the game. It's weird. And we all have to know what it is we're chasing, but keeping a journal, and this is this third, the third idea, making it so it's measurable. That's the most important thing. So this pattern of, okay, I'm gonna go three days. I'm gonna work 45 minutes on each of these days and I'm gonna put them strategically in the week so I have a good chance of doing it. And when I get there, I'm gonna like it because I'm setting myself up because this will be like a vacation in my life. This is gonna be the best part of my day because of where it shows up in my day. And then you have that. And then when you do it, when you show up, just take a journal, here's mine. You know, it's pages of this. It's like, this is how I'm tracking what I'm doing. I, I don't 
don't have anybody in this but me. Like I'm just this person with this career of making art that no one's made before. There is no measurement tool I've got. It can feel pretty weird. I mean, really, you know, it, we can all look at Picasso's life and say, oh God, it's so sequential, it makes so much sense. But I'm sure you, when he was doing it, it's just like, it's so random. So this keeping a journal and writing when you get to the studio, first of all, check the box, I did it. <laughs> you know, I'm here, Wednesday at 12, I'm here. Um, and write a sentence, just one or two things about something that was of interest, something you gained, something that was cool, like, you know, it was great. I, I didn't think I would want to be here, but actually once I started, I started playing around with that new paint I got, I love this red color. You know, it can be as simple as that. Put that down, check that box, and that will be, it. you'll be able to go back in these pages. You know, I can go back in these pages and I can see where I was, you know, like, and, and I'm improving and I don't have to, it's not for anybody, but it keeps me going. This is what I'm most interested in, in helping artists do. Just stay in the game. I am dead sure that anyone who wants to make art can do this. I, I can prove that. I, that's what we do. That's what Art to Life does. It's like, it's so fun. It's such a great process. But what happens is people stop. And it's for these reasons, because it's, it's bizarre and it's nebulous and it's, you can't tell and you go up and down, all of that. So I hope those, those kind of ideas, um, you know, obviously maybe you do some of these, you know, so take what is useful for you and try it. You know, I found especially uh, that I've gotten better at putting my art time in certain places during the week. That's actually like a kind of skill set of how to place the darn thing. So you do it for one, and then when you're showing up, you're, you're ready to do it and you wanna do it. You can actually look forward to it, you know? Um, so uh, yeah, so Zane saying those feelings, I must be normal after all. And that's part of it, you know, it does normalize it. When you've got a few months of pages where you've been doing something habitually, you and you're tracking your progress, it's such a great momentum. It's, it keeps you moving, right? Um, awesome, Geraldine. Well, I'm so glad uh, you got that. Um, so um, we, what I'd love you guys to do, um, we are gonna be doing this free workshop coming up. Um, it starts February 15th. This is our big art to life free thing. I'm gonna be giving a ton of information um, around keeping momentum, um, learning how to get unstuck in your art. What are the big movers and shakers on how to do that? Once you get into the studio and it's more than just a Facebook Live, I gotta be demonstrating stuff. Um, but, but first you gotta get there. And it's gonna be easy during that week, starting February 15th, because we're gonna be on a schedule. I'm gonna be showing up, I'll be doing some live in studio trainings and I'm gonna want you to, um, you know, I'm gonna give some little challenges to be like, take what I said, do some stuff, show up tomorrow, let's talk about it. You know, like get some motion going. So that week should be pretty easy. And I would love you to get that, get, you know, sign up for this, get on the schedule of it, download the schedule, look at it, and let's plan for this week so you can make some tremendous progress um, and figure out how you can free up a little bit of time to do this. It's, it's more than 30 minutes, you know, it's an hour, hour and a half four or five times and uh but it's it's compact and it's powerful so anyway um i hope to see you guys there audra um yeah get she gets gets more done when i'm held accountable to show up yeah it's all about that it's just you know like okay i'm in i'm doing it i'm gonna i'm gonna do it <laughs> you know awesome all right well um pam saying i was just on the phone with my sister looking back at a year of daily art and I was amazed, right? Yeah, that's that's great. The challenges are good for that too. Um, Roxanne, fantastic. Tootsie, thank you. All right, you guys. Well, um, I'm not sure I had anyone on YouTube. I hope that worked. Um, um, but it did. You, it was. Oh loud. yeah, Mimi was there. Cool, great. 
Um, I'm trying to learn how to do this so I can also include YouTube. So Mimi, you're my one person here uh, on YouTube. So thanks for being here. Um, everyone, appreciate it, Magdalena, everyone. And um, I will be in touch. Go ahead, uh, click on that link below. You can just go to artlifefree.com and uh, there's all the information there. And we're doing some cool stuff beforehand. I've got this thing, it's a little surprise thing called the Workshop Diaries, stuff I'm doing before. It's all going right now. There's just stuff coming out every week as we build up to February 15th, which is the big workshop this year. Anyway, uh, thanks you guys. I will talk to you real